Hello, welcome back. Uh, this is part three of my lecture on uh, the transformation from uh, from early Christian art through um, Europe all the way to the late Gothic period. And like I mentioned earlier, this lecture is cursory and it goes through a lot of time very quickly and probably no no part, no jump is more cursory than the jump that we just went through where on the last slide we were looking at if, uh, let's see if I can go back. The last slide we were looking at, we were in 432 CE or AD, and then now we are jumping to the early Romanesque, um, looking at the Church of St. Michael of Hildesheim. And it is, yes, that was about 600 years that we just jumped. And um, there is a whole lot that could be covered. A lot of things happened during this time. Some that some people have at some events or some periods, some people have described something like the Dark Ages, but a lot of this was periods of great cultural activity. But one of the things that held true through this whole time period was the idea that a church was um, following the basic basilica structure, so the structure of a central hall um, supported by columns and arches with aisles on either side, um, and then kind of often a semi-dome um, area for the end for the altar, and frequently also a sense of a transept, a cross um, right in front of the altar. And so that does stay the same. And this like I said, this piece that we're looking at here, this church, um, is an example of early Romanesque, and it is uh, one of the most gorgeous. And it gives you a sense of what that early Romanesque style was about. It was, in a way, a, an attempt to kind of recapture uh, some of the um, economy and simplicity of, of organizing space that we saw in some Roman architecture. Um, I think the, the term Romanesque was not a term that the people who made these uh, used. It's something that art historians later applied. And whether those people were thinking about Roman uh, buildings or not is hard to say. Um, and then here we have an example of a late Romanesque building, uh, St. Sarenin in France, um, Toulouse. And it is also a basilica structure. You can see here. You can actually see down the aisles slightly as well as uh, down the, the central area. And you can see how the idea of the Romanesque is being transformed as the buildings are getting taller. Um, the piers that are holding up these arches um, are getting pretty solid, but it's about this movement upward. And as we look at maybe another view of St. Saren, um, we can get uh, more of a sense, but there is still, just like in those um, in those older, um, in the early Romanesque, there's still that kind of that yearning for simplicity, uh, like these perfect circular archways right there that feel um, Romanesque and feel reminiscent of earlier periods. But then there is also in this area right here the suggestion of what was going to be coming next in these what are called groin vaults. Groin vaults are where barrel vaults meet in an intersection and create these kind of triangular pieces. And it is in the idea, in a way, of the groin vault and the potential of what that can do that leads to the next thing that we're looking at, which is the Gothic. And so I'm going to end this lecture today at this point, part three, here on Chart Cathedral, which is one of the most important Gothic cathedrals and a pretty early one, but one that really established um, the idea of what the what Gothic architecture was about. And as you can see, it's all about the lift, the movement of, of the architecture upward to the sky. Um, all right, I will get to you with part four.